Hey guys, it's Jim. What's happening? Thanks for coming back. I appreciate it. And I've got another Luminar quick tip for you today. And this one's about the split toning filter. It's a filter that I use quite a bit. And specifically, I'm going to talk about using split toning to accentuate the light at sunset or blue hour, just to create a little bit more mood or even drama in your photo. Now, I've been using split toning for years back in Lightroom and, uh, you know, way before I ever had Aurora or Luminar. Uh, but it does exist in both programs. However, note that in Aurora HDR, uh, split toning is called color toning for some reason. I don't know why. It's the same thing. But I'm talking about specifically in Luminar, although, frankly, this video is applicable for Aurora as well because the tool is the same and operates the same. So let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, I have this photo. It's a three-exposure HDR that I took on my recent trip over to England. And as you can see, it was a beautiful sunset. Um, I went ahead and merged the brackets in Aurora, and I did a couple of minor adjustments, and I brought it over here to Luminar to show you how split toning works. Um, now, I'm not done with the photo. There's other things I would do to finish this, and I'm not going to do a full edit because this is really about just using split toning to accentuate the light. Now, speaking of the light, you can see that it's pretty gorgeous. It was a gorgeous sunset. This was in Eastbourne along the southern, England, uh, southern coast of England. And um, unfortunately, I wasn't in a great place to, to shoot the sunset, but I had to shoot it. So I found this little median with all these, you know, flowers and whatnot. And anyway, I was mostly interested in the sky. But I wanted to use that to illustrate how split toning works. So as the name implies, it allows you to split the tones. And they're split between highlights and shadows. So that's the two components of split toning. And those are the tones, the highlight tones and the shadow tones. Now, if you look over here at the tool, you've got a hue slider and a saturation slider for both highlights and shadows. And now all you do is you slide the hue slider to get the color that you want. Now notice that the saturation slider is changing colors as I move the hue slider. As I get closer to the blues, that gets darker. I get over here to the pinks, it gets pink. Back here, it's green, etc., etc. However, nothing's happened to the photo yet, and that's because the saturation level that I would choose to go with the highlights hasn't been adjusted. It's still on zero. And so they use the word saturation. I think of it as a mount. It's basically a slider that's going to be more or less of whatever hue you want uh, that you choose here. So for this sunset, I would pick something kind of in that orange because I'm going to pop that light in the sky. And then you just drag the saturation slider. And there you go. You can see that the photo is changing. And now that I've done that, I actually might go a little bit more left, a little bit closer to the red. And there you go. So now you can go crazy if you want and really start dragging it to the right. Obviously, it's up to you. It's your photo. But that's really how it works. It's very simple. Let me show you the before, much more blue, and the after, much more of a sunset sort of pop. Now, you don't have to use both highlights and shadows on a photo. There's many times I'll just come in on a sunset and just use highlights, and that's because the highlights are mostly in the, uh, in the sky, and that's the light I want to accentuate. But you could, could come over here and say, you know, do something with the shadows, right? So maybe you want to maybe add a little bit of blue to the shadows or something. So, you know, all you have to do is experiment and move things around. There's the before. There's the after. I think it looks pretty good. Keep in mind, uh, masking would be very important here, where you could come in here with the brush, choose the brush, and then mask it in or out of specific areas. For example, if you really bump up the highlight colors, um, the sky is going to get affected, but these white buildings are going to start to take on some of that color cast. So that's where you might use the brush and then just come over here and choose eraser and erase it from those buildings. Or alternatively, you choose the brush and paint it into the sky. Makes no difference. Um, now, two other things about split toning. There's the amount slider. So you can have this all set here and you can say, you know what I want to do? I like it, but it's a little too much. I'm going to take the amount down. So to me, um, it, it's called a mount. I think of it as an opacity slider. It's kind of like changing the opacity of a layer, maybe, or a preset, where you put a preset and at 100%, it's too much. You slide that lever to the left to reduce it. That's what a mount does. It's just a opacity slider, right? So there it is at 100%, and here it is. The further I go left, I go all the way to zero. No impact is shown. So sometimes I adjust that, or I balance that with different adjustments on the saturation sliders. One more thing to note, and that is there's a balance slider. And as the name implies, it's sort of a level balance right now between shadows and highlights. But if I like the kind of bluish gray that I picked up in the shadows, and I want more of that, I could slide this to the left, and you can see the photo is going to get 
more of the shadows color than the highlights color because I'm erring on uh, in that direction. Alternatively, if I turn uh, and drag this to the right towards highlights, more of the color that I've chosen in the highlight section is going to uh, be applicable uh, across the photo. And so, you know, you might do something like that. And, and so again, you may want to combine these. Maybe you want to say, well, I like highlights a little bit better, but now it's too intense. Maybe I want to take it down a little bit. And, you know, you end up with something like that. So here's the before, here's the after. The point was very powerful, very easy to use. Just experiment a little bit. And I'm going to show you one more photo. Um, also from London, you probably recognize what this is. Um, but uh, it started out as a single 30 second exposure. You can see that's what it looked like. I added Accent AI and Tone just to give it a little bit uh, more, you know, sort of um, brightness for lack of a better word, right? So I went from that to that. Haven't done anything with colors and I want to show you on split toning. I might would come in here and just say, you know what I want to do is I kind of want to create a little bit more of a blue hour feel. And so I can come over here and do that with the highlights, right? So you can kind of see what I'm doing uh, and just kind of messing around with this till I get a color I like. And same thing with shadows. Maybe you say, well, it should be kind of blue all the way around if I'm going to, you know, do uh, the highlights. Maybe I should do the shadows. And so I'm creating more of a blue hour look. Maybe take the amount down, that sort of thing. You can just mess around with it. You could also say, you know, I really would rather have more of a kind of a yellow kind of faded look. Um, and maybe you create that like this by just moving the, the hue sliders for both highlights and shadows into the appropriate spot. And you can see it went from that to that in that case. I kind of like the blue better. I think I would do something like this and maybe uh, a little bit here on the shadows, but not a lot. And maybe air a little bit to there and take that down a little bit. Let me show you the before and after. There's the before, a little grayer, a little flatter. And here's the after, a little bit more blue. Um, that's how it works. I just wanted to make a quick video tip about that. That's split toning. You can do gobs of things with this uh, filter. In fact, I'll probably come back and use it again on other videos just to show you some other ideas, but I hope that helps. That's a quick tip on using split toning in Luminar in order to accentuate the light for like sunsets and blue hours. It's a trick I use all the time. Very easy, straightforward, and fun. Just check it out. And that's it, my friends. Hope this helps. Thanks for coming. If you haven't yet, subscribe, like the video, share with your friends, and don't forget to leave a comment. Let me know if there's other tips you want me to explore. And I'll see you next time, friends. Thanks a lot, and adios.